Okay everybody, welcome to this video. In this video now, we're going to go through and demo the AppStream image build script. Um, so the first thing we really want to do is deploy a new AppStream image builder. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, which will take me to our AWS console. Now in the previous videos, you will have seen how we can manually log into the, into the console and launch an image builder and select the images and that sort of stuff. So it's probably worth walking through now how we could do that from the AWS CLI. Here on my MacBook, I have the AWS CLI installed, and if I type AWS configure, it will show you the access key ID or the last parts of that access key that I'm using, which I could confirm against my account here. And I know that that's the correct one, so I'm just going to hit enter, so I don't want to change that. I know the secret access key is correct as well. I'm going to leave it at that. It's most important here you select the region that your AppStream services are running in. In this instance, mine hasn't changed, but it's EU, EU West 1 for Ireland. And I'm not going to change the default output format. We're going to leave that as none at this stage. And so that's AWS CLI configured. If we do AWS App Stream Describe Image Builders, plural, if we hit enter, we will get a list of information around uh, image. My bad, it shouldn't be images. So if we AWS app stream describe dash image dash builders, you can see that we have zero image builders at the moment. And if we go to our console and we cancel out of this creation thing, you will see that that's indeed the case, certainly in the island region. So let's go and run. Let's go and create a new one from my text edit here where I have saved this command previously. If we go back to our terminal window and we type in the full command, you can see AWS App Stream Create Image Builder. We're going to give that image builder a name of Masters of Cloud Version 2. That's fine. It doesn't really matter about the name of the, of the image builder. Um, it's going to start an image builder by selecting the base image builder 1612-2018. Where did I get that name from? Well, I'll show you. When you launch a new image builder, the first thing you need to do is select the image it's going to start up with. If we change the uh, image family to general purpose, there's the name there. You can literally just cut and paste that out of out of the conf console here. Um, and that's the name that we're using there. This changes month to month, so you need to make sure you're updating your script to get the latest version. I'm going to set the instance type to be a stream.standard.large. So for instance, if we were here and we click next, it, this is the section I'm talking about, ste stream standard medium or stream standard large. It's totally up to you. Um, one is 11 cents an hour, the other one is 22 cents an hour for the for the standard stream large. We're telling it the, the VPC we're wanting to put it in. Um, and interestingly, it, you don't actually give it a VPC ID, we just simply say drop this instance into this subnet and drop it into this security group. And the next question is probably how did I get that information, all those VPC configuration, subnet IDs, etc. Well, let's go and have a look at the AWS console. You can do this from the AWS CLI. It's probably easier if I just show you from the management console. In the management console, if I go to VPC, conveniently for this account, I only have one VPC. If I can go to the subnets, I'm, I will see the subnet ID of the subnet where I want to place my AWS image builder. We'll check that that's correct. Let me scroll this down here. So you can see we're going to drop this uh, image builder into the A925FOF3, this, this subnet here, which is public subnet 1A or 10000. Um, and we're going to put it into the security group that starts with SG 549. And I believe that's the default security group. Let's go and have a look. There it is there, which is A5949. Uh, and that's just the security, the default security group um, where it's going to place this image builder. It's also going to enable default internet access for this machine, which if in a public subnet, it means it just gets an elastic IP address, basically. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click or hit enter on the keyboard. It's going to go away and it's going to create or start the image builder now and you can see it's in a state of pending. If we go back to AppStream, I'm going to cancel this build and you can see I've now got a image builder that's in the state of pending and that's on its way. If we go back to our console, we should be able to go AWS AppStream, describe dash image dash builders again. Uh, whoops, describe image one word, builders plural. There we go. 
So there we can see the state of pending and we can keep refreshing that until we see the state goes from pending to running. I'm just going to pause the video while we wait for this image builder to start and then we can continue on. Okay, now that we pause the video and we waited for the image builder to build, you can see if we rerun the query, and it was AppStream describe image builders, we can see that the state of the image builder is now running. Um, and we can actually create a URL in order to connect to the image. Instead of what you would traditionally do is select the image here and click connect. Um, let's go ahead and do that from the iTerminal window as well. Uh, I have the command which I have cut and paste from a previous session and it's actually very straightforward. I'm going to right click and paste it here into my iTerm window and basically AWS AppStream create image builder streaming URL for the name of the image builder which is Masters of Cloud version 2 and give it a lifetime or a validity of, of 60 minutes um, so uh, the, the, URL will be, the URL will be valid for an hour. Um, I'm going to hit return on the keyboard and it's going to wait and it's going to, going to go away and create me that URL. Now because I'm using iTerm2 here, it gives me the option if I hold the Apple key, I can left click the URL and launch it. Um, be aware that's not available in the Max terminal window, only in iTerm. So let's go here, I'm going to Apple and left click the URL. And you can see it's going to connect us straight into the image builder now. So let's log in as the administrator. Once we're logged in as the administrator, I'm going to simply upload the PowerShell file. We'll run the PowerShell file as an administrator. We'll provide all the details it requires for the variables, and then we'll let it run. So first things first, I'm going to click up here in the, the menu bar for AppStream for the users, uh, well, for us actually, as the image builders, and I'm going to click on the My Files. I'm going to click and select the temporary files option. I'm going to click the Upload Files option. And I'm going to select my script here, which is locally on my machine. I'm going to open and upload that to the AppStream image. That's done already. I'm then going to use the Windows Explorer option here. I'm going to go to the temporary files folder, and there we can see our script ready to go. I now need to open this as an administrator, so it's easiest if I open a PowerShell window. And if we right click, run as administrator. So we now know that that is absolutely running as an administrator. I'm going to copy as path and we can simply put ampersand and then the path of the script. And then I can press return on the keyboard. First and foremost it needs my AWS access key, my AWS secret key, the bucket name and the bu bucket folder. Um, so let me go and get those details now. So first and foremost is providing the AWS access key. I'm going to right click and paste that into the PowerShell window. I'm going to press return. The next is the PowerShell secret key. And if I copy from my machine and I right click straight into the AppStream window, it does cut and paste directly now into the window, which is great. Previously you did have to use this option. And sometimes you may find if you don't accept the clipboard integration, you will have to use this anyway. Copy to local device, paste to remote session, etc. Um, but we've got the access key, the secret key. I'm going to press return. I'm going to get my bucket name. And this is the bucket that is in my S3 bucket. No, sorry, this is a, an S3 bucket that I have. And this is an S3 bucket that I have in my account that I that my secret my AWS access key and secret key has read-only access to. I'm going to also paste that here into the window. There is the name of the bucket. The name of the bucket folder is build with a capital B. This is case sensitive. And then finally, what image are we going to deploy now? Image one is Office 365, uh, and image two, I believe, is Project and Visio, and, and not the full Office suite. So at this point, I'm going to choose I M A G E one, and we're going to let it run. So you can see it's downloading the files. It's created a build directory here already where it's downloading the files from S3. I'm going to minimize that while we let it run. Uh, you can see it's running some generic uh, installations of applications. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pause the video while we wait for this to complete. Um, and you will then see that the script is successful. It's gone and installed. Uh, Adobe Reader, it's installed Office 365. Then we can seal the image, shut it down, and we've done our script deployment of our AppStream image. 
Let me pause the video while we wait for this to complete. Okay, we can see now that the script has completed. The image assistant applications have been injected correctly. And you can see we've now got Windows, Explorer, Access, Word, Excel, um, all added here as individual applications in the list, which is fantastic. Um, the final step, of course, in this image process is to actually go ahead and com complete the process uh, and complete the image. So I'm going to click next now on this wizard. Um, I don't have any default settings I want to apply um, to log in as a template user and effectively edit the default user settings. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to click next. In the test section, I can choose to switch to the test user, but because I trust the script, I'm happy that this is going to work. The final thing we really need to do is just click or optimize the apps themselves. So I'm going to click launch and we'll watch the apps open. There's Windows Explorer. I'm going to click continue that it's that I'm happy that's opened. The next one will be access. And as soon as that loads up, I'll click continue. Happy that that's loaded. Finally, the same with Excel and with Word. Clicking continue as they load up properly. It then optimizes the app launch experience. And that basically looks at all the DLLs and executables and files that the apps used to open so that those files are optimized for streaming to to the instance straight away so uh, effectively the users get a better experience and it's quote unquote optimized so here we can provide the name of the image and we'll call this APS underscore general purpose underscore auto build 2 I'll keep the display name the same the users won't ever see this anyway um, the description will be updated, or I don't need to update the description because I get enough information in the console. And I'm going to always use the latest version of the agent. I'm going to click Next. And finally, click Disconnect and cre create the image. And it will go away now and snapshot this image for us, ready for deployment to our fleets. This is the end of the video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.